Hi folks, I'm back here with Timothy Barlow uh, from mattoglad.com. Again, you're watching the recession is a terrible thing to waste. Are you mentally prepared? Tim and I and our, our list of guests is going to prepare you mentally and financially to take action to this recession so you can leverage and build wealth for yourself. So here we're talking about uh, your perspective and how you're viewing this economy and how you're viewing the recession and how you can leverage it in a positive sense to change your life. So Tim, we may be discussing the things that people don't want and the things that they do want. Making a list, you say make a list, put left and right of what you don't want and what you do want. Of course, the opposite of what you don't want is what you should want. Once we have that and we're clear in what we do want, what's the next step? Well, with that step, you've, you've, you've come to a clear mental decision, you know, a, a conscious decision of what it is you want. Now we want to tap in further into the unconscious, which is to say, um, like the emotional mind. So when you sit down and you say, okay, this is the list that I want, mm -hmm. what do I want or how am I going to approach going to get that, a lot of excuses are going to start to come up. Really? Yeah, a lot, a lot of justifications, a lot of excuses, a lot of uh, you know reasons why you can't do what you do, or um, just little blocks, little things you might say. Um, you might say, you know, you need money to make money, or uh, how can I go ahead if uh, you know I, I can't work two jobs, or or I have kids, or you know what, whatever those excuses are, those are actually a protection mechanism that our subconscious puts in for us. What is it protecting us from? Um, from what we want. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. So, but so is, is it a protection or a prevention? Um, well, it's both. I mean, it, it's, it's when we start to get towards what we want. I mean, IBM did a study on this many years ago. They created what they call the comfort zone theory. And that we all operate in a known zone, a comfort zone. What we know, what we've experienced, we, we can work towards. So when we're approaching success, for example, that's an unknown for many people. You know, that a lot of people will say, for example, that, oh, I'm afraid of failure. I question that. I'm not so sure. Really? Yeah. Because I, I, how many of us have dealt with failure time and time and time again, that even though it's something we don't want or it's painful and that kind of stuff, at the end of the day, it's still a known commodity. We know, you know. So, so what you're really saying, Tim, is that failure is a known and being successful is an unknown. Is an unknown. And... Anything that is unknown to us, I mean, it, me sitting in front of a TV camera is, is still becoming, an, you know, but it's becoming more known. Right. So when we're faced with something, the unknown, that immediately brings up fear. Mm. What, what's going to happen? We don't know what's going to happen. We like to know what's going to happen. A lot of us don't like surprises. We like birthday surprises. We like the, you know, a happy mm -hmm. surprise, but right. we don't like the, oh, I wasn't counting on that surprise. Right. So... When we're faced with the unknown, it immediately brings up fears. Those reasons and excuses and justifications are really that protection from that fear. I mean, it, it, it camouflages it in such a way that it prevents, it, it's the barrier that we have to get over. So what you're saying, we actually are preventing ourselves from being successful by using words like, I don't have enough money. Right. My credit is not good. Right. I don't think it would work for me. Right. And, and you're saying that's a known zone. It's to protect... It's to keep us comfortable. That even though we want to be, you know, we, if we're unhappy with our lives, we're not making the money we want to make, we, we say we're uncomfortable. That's not really true. We may, be, uh, we may not be content. We right. may want more. But we're actually strangely comfortable. We know this, this, this land. Because if we, as you're saying, if we're not comfortable, we actually do something to change it. Right. And so we're not doing that fast enough. Working towards success is actually making a conscious decision to be uncomfortable. Really? It's, 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 it's when, I, when I'm, when I'm going to move towards success, I'm basically, you know, again, surrendering to the notion that I'm going to be uncomfortable for the next little while. Right. This, <laughs> this, this is kind of throwing people off because I'm thinking most people think that working towards success means in, they're going to be comfortable. What you're saying is actually the reverse. Well, I mean, there's, there's a saying, I don't want to sound cliche, but there is a saying that says the definition of insanity is when you do the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result. Right. So, you know, when... When we think about success, we want to, we, 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 we want to move forward and we want, we want to have all the things that come with success. Right. We want the boats, the cars, and this and that. But what those things come as the result of us changing our action steps. Our action steps come from our you know, emotional or unconscious position, how we see the world. If we're not 
feeling safe or if we are, don't have a very good relationship with risk, mm -hmm. then we're going to back away most times. And when we back away, then we're going to get the results that we always get. Right. So now we understand this. We take in step-by-step -step process. We, um, we clear what we want. We are re identifying now the things that's preventing us right. from, from getting what we need, which is our language right. or our behavior and habits, which we don't have enough money, we don't have enough credit, we don't have a bigger job, blah, blah, blah. So now we identify these, these problems now or, the, or these, these block, blockage. Well, what's next? Well, as I said, when we start to uncover these emotional reasons and excuses, we start to take a look and we say, okay, um, if I, for example, have a fear of success, then again, I want to peel that back a little bit and say, well, why? What, what, what is it that maybe I equate success to? So if you think, for example, when people think about they wish to win the lottery, I wish I win the lottery, that would take care of all my problems. That's true. You know, immediately it would take care of almost all your financial problems. And now you're going to have some new problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? First of all, you're not going to know who your friends are anymore. Right. <laughs> you know, some, it's possible. I mean, or you're going to, anyone new you meet, you know what I mean? You're, mm -hmm. you're, um, and you're, you're, even though you have, you, you don't fear making money anymore. You know, we have a fear where we say, well, I, 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 I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. So I win the lottery. And now I have enough money. So my fear of needing more money is gone. Right. But my new fear is losing money. Well, you see what I'm saying? Right, so, it's I got like, you. so this is where when we go into our unconscious, even though our conscious mind may not think of this, our unconscious know these things. You mm -hmm. know, like it goes to that place and goes like, well, if I'm successful, then they're going to they're going to want more from me. They're going to want to. I won't have any time. You know, a lot of so, people, so now we have a different fear. Our fear is losing money. So really and truly, all is going to be a fear in our life. Fear is prevalent. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost everywhere you're going to go. You know, it's just how you manage it. A lot of people think that courageous people are people that have no fear. Right. That's not true. They have they just, just as much fear. But they have more conviction on where they want to go. They're willing to override or bypass that fear. They're willing to do it anyway. So like, I, what I understand for myself and most of my successful friends and investors, that like, there is a fear. There's also going to be a fear. a fear of winning. There's a fear of losing. Okay? Right. Uh, but as you're saying, if our, our objective, our focus on the end results, which is winning, it should be stronger than the fear. Right. So again, when I use the term neuroassociation, mm -hmm. this is where we go to where we say that you know, the fear comes up with, uh, if I, for example, say I'm going to start my own company, immediately I'm going to have an emotional response to that. It's either going to be, woohoo, I'm going to be rich, or it's going to be work. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be pain. We associate, as human beings, we basically avoid pain, seek pleasure. Right. I don't want to, you know, I know that's oversimplifying, but really at the mm -hmm. end of the day, that's what we do. We, we avoid pain we and we pleasure. seek pleasure. Right. So if I'm resisting something, if, ex if, ex if excuses and reasons and justifications are coming up, then really what's happened is once I have focused on what I want, there's an immediate emotional reaction that says pain. Mm -hmm. And if I can identify that and then turn that around and say, well, that's not really true and turn that into pleasure, then, then, then I don't really need anything like willpower or anything to get moving forward. I, so, so some folks might say, if you stay positive, eliminate all negativity in your life, okay, then you're on the course towards success. What do you think about that? Um, I'm not sure that's realistic because to just say positive, I mean, it, it, it is, it, that's, there's a level of denial. I mean, it, it's, you know, you may think that positive, you may be able to do that with the 10%, but your feelings might not match that. So you're saying the positive thinking alone can't override uh, all these other fears that we have in our it's, mind. It's important, but positive feeling is much more important. Positive thinking, as I said, 90% of what we do is unconscious. 10% mm -hmm. is conscious. So if I say, well, I only need to do positive thinking, that's 10%. Right. So I'm a 9 to 1 ratio. Which one do you think is going to win out in the end? Right. The, 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 yeah, the right. 90 percent of course. All right, folks, we're here with, again from Timothy, with Timothy Barlow from mattheglad.com. This is a recession. It's a terrible thing to waste. Uh, Timothy is a perspective coach. We're trying to get your perspective on the recession in the right track so you can take action, leverage, and build wealth. The question is, are you mentally prepared? See you soon.